I have different adaptations of, of the grip. So we have the French grip, so being on the inside. And the French tympanus grip, let me get a pad here, is basically what I learned from Kieran Irvin, which of course, it's really about tympanus. So it's, you know, adapted now to a uh, snare drum or a drum set. And uh, what we do is for the, for the French grip is to get a nice open bounce out of the mallet. So when you're playing on a timpani, one, you have a very thin head and a kettle drum can distort if you hit it too hard. You can also, if you try to do a roll too fast, you can cancel out the sound of the drum. So French grip, when you've seen presentations of many guys, they'll say it's just thumbs up. It's not just thumbs up. It's also about opening up the fingers to respond to the body of the stick so you can get a nice open bounce. And it has nothing to do with speed, nothing really to do with like quick, intricate, rudimental playing. It's really about space and understanding and feeling the, uh, the value of the weight of the stick, which is most important. If you can really detach that stick from how you've kind of housed it and get it to swing inside your hand, you'll be more successful in how you move around. So French grip, one identity. German, more formidable for the technical thing. So if I want to do like three stroke roughs, four stroke roughs, and all those kinds of exercises, those would be best met with a German approach. And then, of course, a more realistic blending of the two American, resting somewhere in between. It would hearken upon both technical approaches. So you would have, you know, the access to fingers in the American grip, which would be best developed in the French grip. And, of course, you could still pull in and do that uh, push-pull or the, what Freddie Gruber called the system in that hybrid kind of a grip. I say if you're really going to develop it nicely, though, it's really well-crafted to develop it in the German approach so that you develop the essence of how your wrist drops and how your hand closes naturally. So blending those ideas and coming up with different approaches that would tap us into different dialects of music, you know, we want to basically first understand the, um, the nuts and bolts of each technical approach. If I'm playing a R&B tinged rock and roll pattern, I'll actually I'll do this because it's not R&B, but it, it represents well. If anybody knows Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, um, that's a nice, breathy, open eighth note pattern played by Nick Mason. What he's doing technically is not so much interesting for me. It's more about the musicality that he's bring, bringing forward for the, for the tune. And so to kind of tap into that open, airy eighth note, a la the tune Breathe from Pink Floyd, I'm going to play a nice open bounce in French grip with my right hand. And I would probably never really enter into a French grip. That's not to say that guys don't do that on the left hand. But I would sit and rest more comfortably with a release to come into my backbeat. And of course, that's uh, Mr. Chapin and the adaptation of Freddie Gruber. So here I go. Think of the tune Breathe from Pink Floyd. A one, two, three. So what am I doing technically? I'm really just letting that stick bounce off the cymbal and following the bouncing ball. 